Alrighty, in this video we're going to be looking at two different forms of quadratic equations and the, I guess the strengths and weaknesses of both and more importantly we're going to be looking at how the different variables within the formulas work and what it does and how does it transform the quadratic equation that you see on the screen in front of you. Now first I want to show you that if I click green off, which is currently the um, parabola that's, or quadratic equation that's being shown, uh, the red one appears in its place and that's because with the uh, variables set up the way they are, aka this is y equals, when a is 1 we've just got x squared and when b and c are 0 it's just y equals x squared for this guy and down here when h is 0 and k is 0 or these two variables are 0 we just have, uh, and a is still 1 of course, that a refers to both. Um, in that case the um, equation here is just y equals x squared as well which is why they match at the start. Now I'm going to turn off the green one for a moment and just have a look at the red guy here and at the moment it's y equals x squared but first of all what happens if a changes and by the way the link to this uh, Desmos page will be in the description and also in eLearn so you can check it out and play with it yourself um, but as a gets bigger here the parabola gets narrower and narrower. <clears throat> If a gets smaller and smaller, say less than 1, but a fraction, it gets fatter and fatter until it goes negative or less than 0, in which case it's going to turn upside down and then start getting narrower, narrower and narrower again as you get bigger values but in the negative direction. Um, so to get a really flat parabola, one that goes off in a um, very, I guess, flat bowl, um, you need very small values of a, like 0.01 for example, makes it very flat indeed. But I'm going to go back to normal, make it 1, and let's see what happens here if we move C. Now I'm skipping B for a moment, I'm going to go straight to C, because C is the easiest I suppose. It's just going to move my parabola up, and it's going to move my parabola down. And the, I, as I mentioned at the start, there's positive and, positives and negatives to both forms of the quadratic equations. Uh, the positive here with this form is that this c term just tells you instantly what the y-intercept is, even if b changes, right? Um, this c value of 4, as I move b, the y-intercept, notice down here at negative 4, the y-intercept no matter what b and no matter what a are, that y-intercept is always going to be negative 4. Okay, the rest of the parabola moves around it. So um, that's one, if not the most um, beneficial part of having a parabola in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c is that this c term is your y-intercept and you can see it straight away. Uh, another big benefit of having in this form is that we know how to factorize this more often than not. If we can't factorize it, we can complete the square on it. If we can't complete the square on it, we can use the quadratic equation in this form. So we can find x-intercepts is what I'm getting at pretty easily using this form of the equation. Um, so that's also useful. Um, now on to B here, B is slightly different from the, the first one to the second one, even though there's no B here. This B term doesn't necessarily just move my equation left and right, um, it does, but always keeping in mind that it wants to use this um, C value as the y-intercept. So if I make B positive, it's going to move my parabola in the negative direction, always, so it's really just moving the axis of symmetry across but not the turning point itself. And if I make B negative, it moves it to the right in the same way, I suppose. So B is going to move it left and right. However, it's also going to shift up and down as you uh, move about in order to keep this turning point, or uh, this intercept rather, at uh, the C value. Okay, so I'm going to put them back to default now. And then I'm going to move on to the other equation here. So turn off the red one, turn on the green one. And this one here, this turning point form, only has two moving parts and all we're really going to be manipulating with the h and k variables is the actual turning point itself. Uh, nothing to do with the y-intercept or the x-intercepts or anything like that. So the strength here is that you know exactly where that turning point is. So if I change h, I'm not going to do the slider, but if I change h to 3 and k to 4, we should find that at this point here, I know you can't see it probably because of my face, but I've just typed in the point 3 comma 4, which appears up here. What should happen is if I put this to 3 and k to 4, we notice that the turning point of my parabola moves to that coordinate, the coordinate 3, 4. Keeping in mind this has to be 
negative h for this to work. So if I wrote the equation x minus 3, it moves my x coordinate to, of the turning point to 3. If this was x plus 3, then it would be at negative 3 over here. Okay, so I can show you that. If I move this to negative 3, it moves it across here. Now, x minus this negative 3 makes x plus 3, which is what I was talking about. Okay, so if we put them back to zero, I'll have a go with the slider and see what it looks like as I go. So I'm going to slide h around and you'll notice that it's just going to be moving my parabola left and right. So as h gets bigger and bigger in the positive direction, it moves further and further right. And as I go left and more negative, it moves it left. Pretty intuitive in that way. And the k value is going to do the same thing, except instead it's going to move it up and down Okay, so very straightforward with the turning point form. As h and k get bigger and smaller, they go more positive, more negative, just like you would expect. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up the video there. Um, hopefully this helped um, and uh, give it a watch again if it didn't make sense. Leave any questions you've got in the comments.